Hey guys, welcome back to the Dangen. On today's episode, I wanted to show you a few tips and tricks for the Denon X4700H. Stick around. Alright, so in today's episode, like I mentioned before, I wanted to show you a few tips and tricks that I thought were useful on the Denon 4700H. Um, right now, in this particular episode, we're going to be using my gaming projector, the BenQ X1300i. This is really just for display purposes, so I can keep some lights on in the background. Super bright projector. Check out my video on it. I'm hoping to make a few more videos outlining some of the cool features that that projector can do uh, in the future. So take a look at that when you get a chance. Um, on the other hand here, what I wanted to talk about was some Dolby Atmos. So, so recently, uh, one of my good buddies and I took the opportunity to install some overhead ceiling Dolby Atmos speakers. Uh, they're Sonance speakers. They're a very thin bezel because right up above me is the plenum for the HVAC system in my home. Uh, so we needed something that was like an inch and a half depth max to kind of fit between that, that two inch depth that the two by fours allow. So we installed those and I've been messing with Dolby at, at a 5.2.4 setting. You can see in the rear here we have the other two speakers and the way it's kind of centered is we got a speaker there and a speaker there and it sits at about a 45 degree angle from the listening position so worked out pretty well shout out to Tim for giving me some uh, some huge help installing those um, took a while for somebody to hold it still while I got the wires routed and uh, they ended up working out great so now I wanted to go through some of the settings for those movies or scenes that don't necessarily have Dolby Atmos and what happened was when I was playing the Dolby Atmos demo disc in particular here um, I also wanted to test out and listen to the sound differences between Dolby Atmos and RO3D so what I did was I took my Denon remote here and I clicked the movie button down below and I search through it to try and figure out where the Dolby Atmos setting was and where the RO3D setting was. And lo and behold, I could not find a RO3D setting. So, I did a little bit of research, tried to figure out what I might have been doing wrong, and that leads me to the next thing, which was in the setup, under audio and under I'm sorry in the setup and under speakers I went into manual setup and ampersign and what I found here was that the supported format was for Dolby Atmos and DTS-X so those are both great formats uh, but it's just two of them, and the Denon supports RO3D, which I really wanted to give uh, give a try. So, went back into the settings here, and underneath layout, in the 9.1 channel setting, I noticed I had it selected for, and what looks correct, main zone with the top front and the top rear speakers. So, in order to get to the RO3D format, I switched through this and I selected top, I'm sorry, front height and top middle. As you can see below, it shows that it allows Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and RO3D. Now, I'm not sure if I wanted that position specifically. So I went through a little bit further here just to find out what else I might have the ability to set the speaker heights as. So the next option was to do a front height and a top rear and then a front height and a rear height. 
So the setting that I ended up choosing was the front height and the rear height. And like it says below, that allows for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and RO3D. Now what I needed to do was go back and recalibrate the Denon with Odyssey. So I'll select that. You'll hear the amp click over. It shows that that's the preset one now. But when I look down below at the Denon, Odyssey does not show, which means I got to go back through and run the whole thing. So, All right, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the Odyssey mic. And if you can see me in the picture here, I've got mine connected to a tripod. Um, it does come with like a, a cardboard stand, but in this case, I'm gonna use the tripod. I can adjust it a little bit better for my surroundings and then run the Odyssey calibration. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, so the first thing you wanna do Open up the front of your system. There's a setup mic. Go ahead and collect that. You'll see Odyssey calibration and Odyssey setup pops up. Here it is on the screen. You'll see that the speaker positions that I selected earlier are now showing. And we're gonna run through each option with the system here. So I'll go ahead and I'll click start. It's telling you here, you can use a tripod or you can use the cardboard cutout, where to plug it in, make sure your subwoofers are turned on, and where the seating positions are gonna have to be. So now in my case, I have the projector in the center seat, but typically my wife and I only use the left and the right, so I'll just place it right behind it and um, we'll go ahead and get started with that. Definitely going to want to make sure that it's at ear height. So right now I've already got it lowered so that it would be at an ear height level when I put it on that. And the next thing you got to remember too is to be really quiet. So I put the dogs upstairs because typically they're running around or playing with a toy. And um, I'll keep quiet while I run these tests. So in this case, I'm going to skip the, sub, the subwoofer portion only because I already have them calibrated from previous calibration that I did on my system. So there's really no need for me to change it uh, other than adjusting the tone in a, or, or the levels in, a, in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this one. All right, so Odyssey setup and the measurements are complete. As it says in the corner there, we're gonna select continue to let it analyze the data. 
Next thing it asks is, do you want the dynamic EQ, which maintains the bass, the clarity, the surround at low volumes, letting you enjoy late night movies and television? Right now, we're just going to turn that off. You can turn it back on if you prefer. But in this case, we're going to say no. Same, way, same thing with uh, dynamic volume. In this case, it gives you the ability to adjust volume to deliver like the perfect levels for day or night listening. Um, it's just more processing. So, you know, the Denon is very capable. Um, it's just giving you options based on your surrounding. If you have kids or you don't want to wake the wife up while they're sleeping or, you know, could be anything. Little baby, you don't want to disturb the dogs, the neighbors. Denon gives you a, a lot of options to adjust that through this Odyssey calibration. So we're going to go ahead and click no. And then what preset do we want this to be? So in my case, um, I want this to be preset number one. This is going to be the priority preset that I want to use in the Dangen that has the RO3D, Atmos, DTSX all set up to the correct heights um, and speaker positions that I have. So I can use it at all times and you know, really enjoy the listening environments no matter what, I'm, what content I'm playing. So we're going to select that as preset number one. Now it's going to go through and just give you that percentage as it analyzes all the room data and we'll show you what it comes up with. Applying room corrections. Give me an idea what the Denon shows on the unit itself. There you go. Odyssey setup. Calibration is now complete. The results are Multi-EQ XT32 on, Dynamic EQ off, Odyssey Dynamic Volume off. Let's check out the details. Now, one of the uh, main things that I've always noticed with these Klipsch RP8000F speakers is it always wants to turn, oh, I'm sorry, and the RP504C center. Um, the Denon always wants to turn that speaker configuration to show the front and the centers as large. Now, um, I've always kind of read and been told that we want to select everything as small, so I'm going to go back through and change those speakers to small. But here it is giving you your distances. So what it's telling you is based on where the microphone was placed, the front left speaker was 13.6 feet away from the listening position on the left, which is that position. And the one on the right, 13.7, you get the idea. You want to look for anything that is off um, or very, very different from anything else. But really, in this case, it looks like everything is very close. Um, the rear height left and the rear height right, a little bit farther off than I expected. But we can, um, we can probably live with that. It's not, it's not even a foot difference, so we can adjust it if necessary. And here's where it set the decibel levels. As you can see, front left is minus 6 decibels, front right 7.5 etc etc everything else is pretty much close that front height right is one decibel more than the front height left um, but it's using the different angles in the room and reflection of sound and open spaces to calibrate those numbers as well so I'm gonna trust it and go ahead and click next again the next thing it's showing here is the crossovers I'll probably leave the surrounds at 40 hertz, the front heights at 110, and the rear heights at 60. But the center and the front, it says full band. I'll probably go change those to 80 or even between 40 and 80, depending on what I like the sound of better. And then I'll change the subwoofer to do a LFE 120 hertz. Click done. Go back into the manual setup, the amp assign, you can see right here, all set up, still shows Atmos DTSX RO3D. So let's go back to the content. And 
here. We'll click the movie button. Boom. On that sound button, now you can see RO3D. Dolby Atmos will pop up once I start to play this content, but now we have that option that I wanted before that wasn't on there. RO3D. So thanks for checking out the video, guys. I'm going to do a few more Denon updates. I'll show you a few of the uh, favorite features that I have, as well as some of the quirks that this particular 4700H has. But in the meantime, uh, get out there, enjoy some good content, listen to your Dolby Atmos, set up uh, all of that stuff so you can listen at all those different uh, music levels and uh, test it out with all this great content. And um, I'll leave you with that. Thanks for joining me here at the Danger. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe and look forward to having you guys back so I can do some more content in the future. Take it easy.